So let's look at this clinical situation and uh, you can see uh, it's a weird situation where there are missing two laterals and you see that you know you have a diastema at the center itself and also that the canines are positioned in the place of the lateral and there is a diastema on the canine on either side and if you look at the overall situation it looks like uh, it's going to be a big aesthetic challenge because either you have to create more space for the lateral incisor on either side to place an implant and you know that to place an implant we need at least a seven and a half to seven millimeter to seven and a half millimeter mesodistal space in between the ridge as well as in between the roots. Uh, apart from that we also need <clears throat> enough buccolingual dimension about six and a half to seven to place the uh, narrow implant as well. So uh, maybe that kind of space has to be created, but the patient should have the time to get through with orthodontic treatment. And many a times we see patients <clears throat> who have no time and they want to get uh, cases done ASAP. So uh, this is the analysis. Now, if we start just filling up these spaces, diastema filling, we'll realize that the teeth will look too long, too te teeth will look too wide. And it will be difficult to manage in the occlusion uh, any additional increase of the height of the teeth. So how do we now try to make the two central incisors look as wide as what they are by, by closing the diastema? That's the first part. Second thing is, how do we make these canines look like lateral incisors? So it's important that we decide to prepare the teeth and in this case we do a full veneer preparation which is prepared on both the central incisors and you, with a full window preparation, veneer window preparation, we get more room for our composites and what we are going to do is we are going to locate the composite restorations and we are going to close the mesial space. So that's the first objective. So the preparation design is important and after that we will do the bonding agent. Then we'll start putting a little bit of flowable material in those very, very sharp edges and then we'll put the first layer of composite. This is typically what we do. But what will we do with the first layer of composite? We want to actually make the face of the tooth. And we want to match the face of the tooth on either side as well I see that the face of the teeth are kept narrow enough so that the tooth does not look wide. We will in this case also see that the teeth are not flattened but they are rounded off a little bit so that the tooth doesn't look as big 